everybody um, it's late January here in Ireland now I think I've explained to you in the past that the weather here is really quite mild we don't have extremes of temperature here not even compared to England um, our extremes here are much more gentle but this morning I reckon it's down to maybe minus four or something like that I've chosen this time early in the morning um, so we won't be disturbed by the traffic so much um, <clears throat> The subject that I want to talk to you about is very close to my heart, wearing my electrical engineer's hat. I want to speak to you about instrumentation, uh, alarms, <coughs> um, oil pressures, all that sort of thing. Um, now, I think it's probably too big a subject to deal with all in the one video. I know you love looking at me and I have a wonderful voice and accent and all that sort of thing, but I think to cover the whole gamut would be too much and you'd, you'd get a bit bored. So I've <clears throat> split it down into five areas. First of all, I'm going to look at temperature, then oil pressure, uh, then RPM, uh, then alarms, and finally just on some general notes on instrumentation. So we'll start with temperature. And I'm going to start with the basics. Why do we want to measure temperature on, on, a, on a diesel engine? Uh, because if the temperature gets too hot, you'll very soon end up in big trouble. Um, if it gets extremely hot, the engine will seize. Equally so, if it gets very cold, you could suffer from cracked blocks and heads and all sorts of things from the effective ice. But also, diesel engines need to be hot to run efficiently. If they're running too cold, they'll be more smoky, they'll not develop as much power, and they'll, they'll cause all sorts of problems. So again, basically, how do we measure the temperature? Well, one very quick way of doing it is simply feel the engine. Is it hot? The best place to feel it is down in here. That's a critical point in there. Because these surfaces here are losing heat. These surfaces here are losing heat simply to the atmosphere. But these surfaces in here are a little bit more insulated and therefore are inclined to get that little bit hotter. Now, the temperature of the coolant is a different matter because all the coolant is swept through to the thermostat here. This is the highest temperature for the coolant and that's where we would fit thermometers. So, um, over and above feeling the engine. Oh, by the way, whenever you're feeling any surface to find out whether it's hot or not, um, always feel with the back of your hand because in the unlikely event that it's very hot and you're going to get burned your hand will move away if you feel it with the front with this part of your hand the part of your hand if you feel a hot surface your hand will actually grip it tighter the same thing is true for electric circuits um, if you're foolish enough to um, feel for electric circuits always feel if you, you suspect a surface is going to be uh, um, at electric potential, always feel with the back of your hand, not the front. Now, uh, again, just sticking with feeling for the minute, on a marine engine, say, for example, the normal temperature is about 60 degrees centigrade. If I feel the top of the thermostat here, if it's 60 inside, on the outside, it's probably a, somewhere between 40 and 50, something like that, which is um, a hottish bath temperature. If you were to sit into a bath at 40 degrees C or 50 degrees C, it would feel a little bit uncomfortable at the start. It takes a little while to kind of wallow down into the water and get it up all around your shoulders. Um, but there's a, an, initial, an initial shock there. Okay, um, we can't say very much more about feeling the temperature. Um, so we'll move on to the first thermometer that we might find in use. And this is it here. This is uh, the Silka. Sika, Sika uh, thermometer. Very basic, very, very simple. All you've got is you have a classical <coughs> um, analog thermometer. Uh, there's a, a, I think it's alcohol that's in here. And it simply expands once the, thermos, the, the thermometer gets warm and that blue line will go up. But a very interesting feature about it is that if you look at it from the right angle, you'll notice that the, the blue line becomes thicker. So if you look at it at the right angle, it's actually very easy and very clear and very simple to read the thermometer. Now again, they are fitted normally 
here just before the thermostat. If you're measuring oil temperature, they could be fitted uh, here uh, or here. Very often they're fitted here on the coffee pot uh, oil filter. They're, I haven't got a price off the top of my head, but um, they're not cheap, but they're, they're a very good investment because they just, they're indestructible. They last forever. You need to be careful about this uh, thread here. It's BSP. Now, the most common thread for us here is 3 8 BSP, but you will get bigger ones. So sometimes you'll have to buy an adapter which allows that probe to go right down into the waterway and get a, 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 true, a true reading there. Now, nowadays, people are inclined to use um, electrical gauges. Here we would have a sensor, something like that, which again is screwed into the waterway or into the coffee pot, whatever uh, you're trying to measure. And all this is, is a, it's simply a resistor. There's an electrical resistor in here. And as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. So in effect, you're actually measuring current here, but it's directly related to temperature. They're fine, they're, they're spot on, they work fine and they're, they're not expensive. Um, you need to be careful about the, the sensor. You'll notice that this one has two terminals on it. What that means is that the sensor is not reliant on the engine for a return to earth. The electric current does not have to flow through the engine to get back to the battery. In a boat, this is very important. Um, in other videos, I'll have explained to you where if you've got currents flowing through the engine, they'll also be flowing through the hull, and that's going to lead to a severe increase in corrosion. In a lorry, or perhaps in a wooden boat, it's not so important. So that's how you judge them. If they've got two terminals, then they're what I call insulated return. Um, they have their own earth. If they've only got one, then they're relying on the engine and, and the hull. Fine, fine on a road vehicle, no problem. Now, very often, the distance from the engine to the dash or the wheelhouse um, can be considerable. It can be meters and meters and meters. So, um, sometimes we use this Amat controller here. Amat controls. Find them very often in trawlers and traditional, traditional fishing vessels. This is simply mounted again there on the waterway. This probe here is as before, but it generates an electrical signal. So we can then have an electric cable running to the wheelhouse or up to our dash and our, our instruments. Super job, the oil pressure comes on here and again that's relayed up to the dash electrically. Uh, they are, uh, again, I don't have a price off the top of my head. Um, they're, they are quite expensive. Um, they're maybe got a wee bit out of fashion. I, I'm not coming across them nearly as much as I used to. <clears throat> but my own favourite for measuring temperature in a gardener is the old-fashioned capillary action. Now, I'm not too sure why these are called capillary action because my understanding is they have nothing to do with capillary. All you have here, again, is a simple bulb here which plugs down into the waterway. Inside, you've got a liquid. The liquid expands and physically moves that lever. Now, um, <clears throat> you'll notice that this particular one has a, a full-scale deflection of 120, that's 120 degrees C, which is, is not ideal because a gardener, even if she boils up, can only go up to 100. So it's as if there's a full 20 degrees of the gauge here wasted. I think a much better scale would be a full-scale deflection of 100, which means that it'll be, it'll be more accurate. You'll get a more accurate reading. Not, I suppose, that really matters that much, if it's out by a, de a degree or two, it, it won't make much difference. I suppose really it's the change in temperature you're uh, hoping to uh, keep an eye on. Again, I, I really like these. There's no electrics involved. I mean, other than the backlight, you've no electrics. So there's no danger of loose connections or bad connections or whatever. And they are actually quite accurate. They're accurate to one degree. 
That's the biggest error you'll get. This, uh, error you'll get is one degree. I really like them. The big downside is that you cannot cut this pipe. They're all um, manufactured with the pipe of a particular length, and you have to stick with that. You can't join the pipe. You can't cut it and join it again. It's just not possible. Um, I prefer to get them made so that the pipe is exactly the length or pretty close to the length that I need. And also I can stipulate uh, the full scale deflection on the gauge itself. You can get modern ones. Here's an example of a modern one by, by Durite. Um, <clears throat> but you'll notice here the situation is even worse. The full scale deflection is actually 150 here. So this is obviously intended for a modern engines. Modern engines, because, <clears throat> because they're pressurized, the coolant is pressurized inside, can go up to temperatures over 100 degrees C. They can go above boiling point. So in a modern engine, yes, this is relevant. Not so relevant uh, with a gardener. Again, I prefer to get them, to get them made. A little bit expensive, but I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's worth the outlay. Um, that's all I've got for you, really. Um, that's just another modern commoner gardener instrument up to 120. Most of these ones that you'll buy uh, in your local auto shop will be single terminal and not really intended for marine use. So I hope you got something out of that. I know I've done a lot of work on cooling on gardeners and I really find it very interesting. Um, we move on now to the next video, which would be on oil pressure. Um, perhaps a, a simpler, a simpler problem. Thank you.